That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. There was a back and forth between President Trump and a journalist when Trump essentially said that he has absolute authority when it comes to matters on reopening the states economically. So you can watch this exchange, uh, a couple of exchanges actually, via CNN. But he's the president of the United States. The authority is total. And that's the way it's got to be. Total. Your authority is total. It's total. It's total. And the governors total. know that. So if, a, if a the governors know that. Now you have a couple of bands of, of, excuse me, excuse me. You have a couple. Could you rescind that order? You have a couple of bands of, uh, of uh, Democrat governors, but they will agree to it. They will agree to it. But uh, the authority of the president of the United States having to do with the subject we're talking about is total. You said when someone is president of the United States, their authority is total. That is not true. Who, who okay, you, you know what we're going to do? We're going to write up papers on this. It's not going to be necessary because the governors need us one way or the other because ultimately it comes with the federal government. That being said, we're getting along very well with the governors, and I feel very certain that uh, there won't be a problem. Has yeah, please, governor, go ahead. Has any governor agreed that you have the authority to decide when their state I haven't asked back anybody. Because I don't, you know why? Because I don't have to. You can very readily see there President Trump going back and forth with journalists, and this is one of the rare cases where I think the journalists are actually correct. It's stupid for President Trump to say this. This is sort of Trump's side of the daily dose of stupid. It is untrue, first of all. We have a federal government which has states which are actually sovereign. The states created the Fed, not the other way around. Trump does not have total authority. In fact, he doesn't even have the prevailing authority in this. And what's really strange about all this is that President Trump saying this cuts against both his approach and what he's done so far and what he said. Now, I wouldn't find it that weird if him saying this just cut against what he said and not what he's, or what he's done, but not what he said. In other words, his approach doesn't match his words. But this also cuts against what Trump has already said about the matter, saying that he's going to let the governors lead. It was very, very odd. It's a very strange heel turn here. So President Trump saying this, it, first of all, it's smacked of dictatorship. I don't think that that's what President Trump was going for. It was a dumb thing to do. The optics on it are really, really bad, especially at a time where there's a lot of eyes on him. And I, just as somebody who cares about federalism, cares about individual liberties, cares about rights, and cares about the states, I can't see any way how this could be interpreted in a positive light. I just can't see it. I, I've heard the interpretation from some commentators that this is just a negotiation tactic. Maybe it is, I don't know, but even if it is, you still shouldn't say it. Like, there are certain things that even if it were an effective negotiating tactic and you were guaranteed to, by saying this, get the result that you wanted, you still don't freaking say it. Now, there's a pretty wide gap between what Trump says and what he does sometimes, so I'm willing to admit that it may be, and, and based on his approach thus far, this wouldn't be too far out of the question, what President Trump actually winds up doing is saying one thing and doing something completely different. That's, that's a very, it would be an unsurprising conclusion to this if that's what wound up actually happening, that President Trump says that he's going to come down on people and that he has total authority and then acts like he doesn't. That would be pretty standard operating procedure for President Trump. But the odd thing here, and the thing that I'm having a, a hard time really comprehending and, and getting over is that it's so different than what he has said in the past. That his whole approach has been a very state-driven, let them decide when to close it down and let them decide what's best for their state, which is the approach I prefer. And he's not only done that, he's been saying that for weeks on end, and the reason that he did this is baffling and the negotiation argument, though I don't like it, and I don't think it's a good justification for why he said this, that does make sense with the fact that he had such a quick heel turn. Here's another one that also makes sense, and I hope that this is not the correct interpretation because I don't, uh, I don't like this one, obviously, is that President Trump has done what a lot of presidents do, which is 
I'll play by the rules up until the point the rules no longer work for me. It is possible that he did the exact same thing that President Obama did with Obamacare and with DACA. That he decided all of a sudden, you know what, I'm going to follow the Constitution. Oh, wait, the Constitution's getting in the way? Yeah, we'll screw that then. Or you could imagine with DACA, he essentially did the same thing. He says, look, I want Congress to act, but if they don't act, I have a pen and I have a phone, I'm going to take care of it myself. In other words, I'd like to play by the rules, but if they don't give me what I want, I'm just going to do it whatever I'm going to do whatever I want anyway. Maybe that's what happened with Trump. I don't know. I hope that that is not the case, but this is a really bad time to be playing with fire with the separation of powers and with trying to undermine federalism. Look, the reason that our states are not a homogenous country and they are individual sovereign states is because in times like this, especially when we're dealing with something that is to some degree, I wouldn't say completely unprecedented, I think that's overblowing it, but to some degree unprecedented, certainly something that has not happened in the vast majority of the people who are living now's lifetimes, I'm really glad that states can take an individual approach. The people that are closest to the people can make decisions because what's right for the people in Alabama might be completely different for the people in Wyoming. I was making the joke in the interview with the last one that the state of Montana only has 50 people. Now, of course, I'm being goofy and exaggerating, but they're already social distancing because they're 50 miles away from their nearest neighbor. So their policies are going to look super different than New Jersey, and they should. And the fact that governors who understand that, who understand the cultural differences, understand the differences in the economy, are making those decisions on an individual basis on when to open their state back up, when to close the state back down, and people that will be most accountable to the voters in that particular state, that's the reason we have federalism in the first place. So that a lower level, a more localized government can be making the majority of the decisions. Whether or not I agree with Trump on certain issues, I would still rather the states have more control. California might do something I think is really dumb. California does that all the time. Still not my place to step in and say as somebody who doesn't live there that I need to dictate down to them what their state laws ought to be. I think most of their laws are stupid. But it's up to them. And if they screw up, they screw up. So... This was a really bad look. I, I don't like the fact that President Trump came out and did this. But here's the other side of that coin. Because you may have also noticed in that clip that out of the, I believe, four banners that went across the screen, that there were a couple of them that were just absolutely ridiculous, saying that President Trump put together a propaganda video at taxpayer expense. And you can just tell CNN has a seething disdain for this guy and is using every opportunity to tell lies about him and trot that out as though he's done something wrong there. Look, here's uh, just... I think it's funny because I've been here the entire time talking about federalism. All through the Bush administration, through the Obama administration, I've cared about this stuff since the beginning. You know who hasn't? The left in the media. And yet, all of a sudden, miraculously, they discovered federalism overnight. It's amazing, isn't it? It's kind of like how Alyssa Milano suddenly discovered due process. I mean, sure, it's been around for 230 years, but thank God Alyssa Milano discovered it so the rest of us can sit at her feet and bask in the glory of her brilliance coming up with an idea that we've had since the beginning of this nation. And the left and the media did exactly the same thing with federalism yesterday. Let's go ahead and look at this tweet for example, from Governor Cuomo. So if you look at this one, here's Governor Cuomo quoting Alexander Hamilton, quote, state governments possess inherent advantages, which will ever give them an influence and ascendancy over the national government and will forever preclude, or preclude the possibility of federal encroachments. That their liberties can be subverted by the federal head is repugnant. Alexander Hamilton. Yeah, I, I got no problem with that. Governor Cuomo, you're exactly right. Finally, Governor Cuomo actually tweets something out that I can applaud him for, something that actually makes sense. And by the way, in response to this, I'm, I'm glad that the left 
also discovered the founders and that maybe those guys had some good ideas and we should listen to them every now and then. Uh, federalism and the founders all in one night. Here's another tweet from the New York Times. So the New York Times did a fact check on this the other day. Fact check. President Trump falsely and repeatedly asserted that he had unilateral power to compel states to lift stay-at-home orders and businesses to open. Now, here's the thing. Just like with Governor Cuomo's tweet. I agree with the New York Times on this. But I'm just sitting here like, wow, they finally discovered federalism. Where was this Governor Cuomo? Where was this New York Times? Where was this the other hundreds of people on the left and in the media that were tweeting about federalism today? Where were they through eight freaking years of Obama? Where were they when Obama was trying to compel the states, for example, and enforcing this that gay marriage is now universal? Every state has to do it. Where was he when he was trying to keep the states from enforcing their own borders. I don't recall the media quoting Alexander Hamilton and siphoning through the Constitution to see who has authority here when that happened. And so, yes, what Trump said was stupid. I denounce it in the strongest possible terms. I couldn't disagree with it more. But at the same time, I'm not going to take a lecture on federalism from the media who ignored it when their guy was in office. This is why you guys have no leg to stand on. Because all of a sudden, it's real important that we follow the Constitution the second somebody is in power that you don't like. But when it's somebody that is your guy, well, it really doesn't matter. He can do what he wants. That's why the American people don't trust you. There's an obvious double standard here. I, I gotta tell you, during the Obama administration... I heard the words incorporation doctrine and supremacy clause so much I wanted to throw up that everybody, every time I brought up something, hey, what President Barack Obama is doing is a pretty clear violation of the Tenth Amendment. They're like, the, the supremacy clause, he can do what he wants. The, you know, the Constitution, it's supreme. No, you idiot, we have a Tenth Amendment. And now that Trump's in office, they've suddenly discovered this. What an idea. Gosh, if only there were somebody calling for that for the past eight years. They're just such a bunch of slimy hypocrites that act like they care about this stuff when we remember that when it was somebody that they liked in office, they just ignored it. They had no interest in digging into the Constitution or seeking the advice of the founders. It's so transparent, and this is the reason that there are people that aren't real married to the founders or conservatism. They just really want to get one up on the left. They completely ignore that. They look at that and go, you guys have no credibility. And you know what? They're right. Now, I agree with the New York Times and Andrew Cuomo and all the other people on the left that were outraged at this. But at the same time, I understand that that's not a lecture that I'm going to take from you. You lost all your credibility with the way you handled Obama. I'm done with you. And millions of other Americans are too. I'm fine. I'm perfectly okay. And I'm perfectly okay with dishing it out as well as receiving it and taking it in when it comes to criticism of this president. But the left has no leg to stand on, and neither does the media. I'm just not going to freaking take it from them because they're such hypocrites. <laughs> Ever wonder where Superman gets his incredible powers? Some people say it's the yellow son of Earth, but I think it's because he subscribes to this channel and likes my videos. Now, I'm not saying that if you subscribe to my channel you'll necessarily wake up tomorrow as a super strong, nearly invincible alien, but it definitely doesn't hurt your chances. <laughs>